Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sandra's Stenography and Shorthand Dictation. I appreciate each and every one of you. I've got some new subscribers, and I wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for signing up. And your presence is appreciated. And um, seeing more people still continue to sign up after I haven't done a video in quite some time, I decided, hey, I can't just give up on these people. Um, so it kind of prompted me to come back um, and start doing more dictations. Um, I did take some time off for myself because I felt like I was getting burnt out. And then when I did decide to come back, I ended up with a, um, with a virus infection a virus so I had to get over that because I could could couldn't stop coughing and no sense in doing a video if you can't talk and then I, after I got over that I had computer issues which if you you're looking at this video and you're one of my you're not one of my new people or you may or you could be a new person and notice that this it said it's saying powered by StreamYard right over here. So with it, I was having issues um, with my previous laptop. So um, for some reason, it no longer wanted to connect to YouTube. So I ended up having to go out and buy a whole new uh, laptop and then I tried um, one of the software encoders that you need to stream I tried that yesterday and that did not work at all so when I got off from work today because I'm doing all this and working 40 hours um, I got off from work today decided to try StreamYard and boom I'm up and running so thank you so much for your patience with me. Thank you so much for still si signing up. You are the reason that I do this. Um, and for those ha who have continued to watch, even though I haven't made a video in a while, thank you so much for your support, support as well. Excuse me, as well. So I wanna thank everyone for trying to keep this, you know, for keeping this channel going when um you know i need to take a break because there are times when things just don't go the way we want them to and hey that's life so now with all of that being said i do have some q a for you tonight um i just picked something random um it's not going to be at any particular speed just work on your accuracy um, I will probably be going around 120. I'll start off slowly at one, maybe around 100, and then um, I'll gradually increase it as we go. Is that okay with you guys? I hope so. So, without further ado oh for don't forget um i'm going to be doing a podcast um on my podcast um so don't forget to tune in um uh, for go check the podcast out i'll leave the link below um so and that's going to be on the coronavirus and i hope you're not so tired of hearing it that you don't want to write it because we're going to try to write that that sucker um, in that podcast that I have coming up soon. So as soon as I get the podcast um, done, I'll be making a short video about that as well. If you want to, because I think it's great practice because it's medical. And then we've got letters, we got words, we got everything in there. So, so um, I've, I've found some great articles that we can um, write that to because I don't feel as if I've been giving you enough medical. So I am going to be concentrating on that. Um, as well. So with this, what we're doing tonight is Q&A, though, um, with the Stephen Avery trial. Um, I believe this said it was page 3000 and something. Like I said, I just picked this out randomly. Um, and 
let's go ahead and get started, shall we? And um, I'm going to make a notation of when I start that, when I start this dictation. And so that's going to be around 517. All right, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I don't know who's asking who. Like I said, we are just going to jump in this here. All right. Question. All right. Answer. So the two that I'm looking at is right here. We have two roots that are associated. This would actually be where the roots would be for two number 30, which would be the first molar, which was not recovered. So this fragment actually comes from the, uh, this bony fragment here comes from the second molar or second bicuspus goes back to beyond the second molar question all right answer but the cheek side aspect or the buccal aspect sometimes it can be difficult to when you take x-rays on a fragment you have to make sure that the x-ray film is on the tongue side so it's very critical to be able to identify which is the cheek side which is the tongue side and and sometimes on burned fragments, they can be very difficult. In this particular case, it would really is, it's pretty easy for me to do that because usually the cheek side aspect is a part that's going to be destroyed and burned the worst. Question, why is that? Answer, well, in a burn victim as the, again, with the intensity and the temperature of the fire and the prolonged duration of exposure, the actually the cheek will be destroyed first and then again the crowns again if we look to the part that would be in the mouth here would be up here and that part is missing so the crown has been destroyed and essentially all the crowns have been destroyed in this evidence. There was one portion of a crown that was recovered and that was on a cuspid, cuspid or an eye tooth. Um, which was really non, not critical at all in the comparison or identification here. But the cheek side aspect is, is further protected from the bone. The roots of the teeth are going to be protected from the bone. The crown has been destroyed. But once that fire, again, with the intensity and the temperature of the fire, 
and the prolonged duration of exposure and the cheek is now gone. We now just have the bone structure protecting that tooth. The crown doesn't have the bone support protecting the crown of that tooth. The part that's in the mouth. So that part has been destroyed. But the root structure is being further protected, insulated uh, from the um, from the uh, effects of the fire. Question. All right. In looking at that, how, where exactly is the would we call that the jawbone or not? Or answer, that's a portion from that lower right corner of the mouth, the lower white quadrant. Question, could you point on the exhibit what part is bone and what part is root fragment just so that we are clear, answer, this is root fragment from tooth number 31. The rest of this is all bone. Question, all right, next one. All right, we have uh, another slide here, 231, lingual. What does that mean? Answer, lingual is the tongue side aspect. And this is where it was. Again, very easy uh, to determine which was tongue side, which was cheek side, because the tongue side, while it's, while it's blackened, where it's been burned, but it's completely intact as opposed to the cheek side aspect or the buccal aspect that was, was rough and had burned, burned away down to the root structure in there. Question. All right, excellent. And what are we looking here on the third slide marked, quote, occlusal, close quote. Answer, occlusal means the biting surface. So now we're looking down directly on the tooth. And again, the crown has been destroyed. So what we're looking at is really the top of the roots of the teeth and the fracture matching was done in here where originally that was two roots. And again, I fracture matched them and super glued them back together. And again, the cheek side aspect has been destroyed up in here and the tongue side aspect is still intact. Question, all right, excellent. And what are we looking at here? Answer, this is the 2001 Panorex X-ray that Special Agent Holmes brought to me on uh, November 9th or 10th. And again, it, it goes from ear to ear. I mean, the one ear would be over here and the other would be over here. And it shows all the teeth. The one I'm concerned about 
is this lower right quadrant or lower right corner. And the tooth that I'm going to be comparing is tooth number 31. Question, all right. Answer, tooth number 32 had been removed after this x-ray had been taken. Question, all right. And um, what are we looking at on the next slide? Answer, uh, this is just a cropped picture of just 31. Question, all right. Qu answer, and it just shows tooth number 31. Question, all right. Again, now, what is a post-mortem x-ray tooth number 31? Please explain. Answer, uh, post-mortem x-ray is one of the x-rays that I had obtained. There were like 46 x-rays that I had taken of all the remains. And this is one of the x-rays that I had taken on tooth number 31 after the roots had been fractured, matched back together, and have been placed in the bone. Question. And just so that we're all clear, post-mortem means Answer, post-mortem is after death. Anti-mortem is prior to death. Question, all right. The next slide, please. This would be the uh, slide number seven, top of page three. Um, what are we looking at here? Answer, uh, this shows that crop picture of tooth number 31 from the 2001 Panorex. So this would be an anti-mortem film over here. And this is the post-mortem x-ray over here. What I'm doing is comparing the root structure that's associated with tooth number 31 to the post-mortem. And it's not just one root structure, it's actually two root structures. Uh, one tooth, but there's, there's two structures associated with it. We have the messial root or the front root and the distal root or the back root. And there are a number of things I can look at here and compare. And again, the Panorex X-ray does show the whole root down here. But I can see it. A little bend to the root down here on the messial root on the distal root also has a slight curvature. And I can see the same curvature here and the same bend over here. Question, all right. Answer, the pulp tissue in the middle of the tooth, we also can compare. And we'll also see that later on, question, all right. Answer at, question, okay. And what are we looking at on uh, the next slide? Answer, what I've done here is just to take uh, and superimposing one x-ray on top of the other. And the one on the left just shows what it's going to look like if it does not match. Uh, where I... I put the post-mortem x-ray on top of the anti-mortem x-ray and just had it slightly askew or just off a little bit. And 
we can see that the pulp tissue, the pulp is the blood vessel nerve in the middle of the tooth. So if you have a root canal done, they go in and they remove that pulp tissue and the lines don't line up over here. Uh, the width between the roots is not consistent. Whereas if I slide it over just a little bit, that pulp tissue is very consistent. Um, the width between the roots is very consistent. Again, this back root is very consistent and it's, it's the dimension of the root itself, the, the dimension of this root, the space in between the roots and the pulpal tissue that I'm looking at. Question, all right, thank you. All right. Now we have another slide, um, a Panorex post-mortem slide. What are we looking at here? These are all with respect to 231? Answer correct. Question, okay. Answer, this is actually the same picture that we just saw. It's just an enlargement, again, showing again that what it's going to look like if it doesn't match or doesn't line up. Question, all right. And um, next slide, answer, and again, where it, in my opinion, is, is very consistent. Uh, where again, you can put one on top of the other and you can you can superimpose one x-ray on top of the other and see how the x-ray, that crown of the tooth up here again has been destroyed. That's on the anti-mortem film, the post-mortem, but it comes up and it just, it's one solid line as it comes up. Question, all right, next slide, please. All right, we have an anti-mortem bite wing um, displayed here. What does this tell us? Answer, this was the, again, it was the oldest of the bite wings. It was a 1997 bite wing, but it was the one that showed the most tooth structure. And so that's what I was concerned about. So it doesn't show the end of the root down here, but it shows more than the other bite wings, which may have come up about here. Question, all right. Answer, and this is just a a cropped version of, of that particular x-ray, that bite wing x-ray. So this is the part that we're zeroing in on that tooth number 31. Question, all right, next one. And we're looking at answer, and this is the post-mortem x-ray again, that we saw before. Question, all right. And now we have an anti-mortem and post-mortem uh, slide. Please explain. Answer, okay. Again, this is the cropped anti-mortem picture. This is the one from the bite wing x-ray. Again, it does not show the entire root structure down here, but it shows a fair amount of it. And again, we can compare the pulp tissue in the middle of the tooth. Uh, there's actually a little constriction of the pulp up here, a little constriction of the pulp down up here. And then it gets a little bit wider 
gets a little bit wider here. Uh, the bend to the root here, we can see the bend of the root over here. So this x-ray, again, it's cutting off part of that root there. So this x-ray is probably coming across right about in here but it does show that bend in there. Question, all right, excellent. What are we looking at at these particular slides? Answer, um, same thing I did with the Panorex X-ray. Um, I've superimposed one on top of the other and I have, again, the anti-mortem film I have a post-mortem film on top of it. And again, just showing what it would look like if it does not match. If the pulp tissues and the root structures do not uh, coincide. And then I slide it over a little bit. And again, it, it, it's the, the way it comes up into the tooth over here, the way the, the, again, this part of the tooth is missing. So it's perfect. So it's a perfect match as it com comes across down here um, to the end of the root down here. You can see where the root kind of just goes from the post-mortem into that anti-mortem film. Um, the pulpos tissues line up nicely. The width between the roots, uh, everything is very consistent. Question, all right. And to the final slide then, uh, there's two more that it just just shows again this is the the same pictures that we just looked at but a larger version of it where it's blown up where it does not match and on the next one uh again it's just a larger version of of when you take those fracture matched pieces and pieces that i've reassociated put back together and then compare them to the anti-mortem x-rays and uh, everything lines up. Question now, do you have um, investor Gator Weigert is going to bring you uh, attorney Fallon uh, first? Would you show uh, counsel before you question and you've been handed an exhibit. What number is that for the record? Answer number 375. Question, all right. Would you uh, examine exhibit 375, please? Answer, this is the, the fragment that I, um, I compared with question, would you take it out and hold it? Answer, sure question display it for us please answer this is the original bag that i received this particular evidence in that was received on from special agent homes on november 11th and it has that section of the mandible from the lower right quadrant there's actually another fragment in there of the what they call the coronoid process, which is the top part of the, the lower jaw and another root fragment in there. But this is the fragment that was critical to the comparison for that tooth number 31. And that, that lower right quadrant of the lower jaw Question, so what you have there are the remains of tooth number 31 from which you made your comparison. Answer correct. Question, all right. Now, doctor, do you have an opinion on whether the root fragments from tooth 31 recovered from the burn pit are consistent 
with the dental x-rays of Teresa Halback obtained from Dr. Krupa. <clears throat> All right. I bet y'all say I'm coming back and I'm coming back with a bang. Yes, I am. I'm getting trying to get those fingers moving and that mind thinking. Your mind has to be thinking as you do this to be able to take down dictation from a dentist or a doctor or a specialist. Like you have to be completely in the moment. So practice that, practice that and practice that because what? Practice makes perfect. And if you love what you do, you will practice until you can get it down. I did start slow and speeded it up as we went along. And I think by the time I ended up, I was probably at around 160, somewhere in there. Um, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, as always, for supporting this channel. You guys are what make this channel. And trust me, if I had saw that people were watching and were subscribing, I wouldn't even have bothered. So I'm back and I'm trying to come back with a bang. Let's get ready, people. Let's get it crunk. Let's get it on and popping. See you at the next video.